Welcome back. This is day two of sexual reproduction. Today we're still talking about how does sexual reproduction work? But before we get into that, you guys have got three do now questions. So go ahead and pause this video, answer those, and then come back when you are ready to go over them. So number one, what are gametes? Okay, we need to know that gametes are the male and female sex cells that unite to form a zygote. But when we say male and female sex cells, what does that mean? Okay, we need to know that the female gamete is an egg and the male gamete is a sperm. Each of those have half the total number of chromosomes. So in humans, there's 23. Okay, and the reason that is, is because later when they combine, they're going to form a zygote that has a full 46 chromosome, chromosomes, or they have the total number of chromosomes depending on the species. All right, let's get to it. The first thing we're gonna to do today is review just a few things we need to know about sexual reproduction before we dive into some specifics. So what is sexual reproduction? We need to know that it requires two parents. This is different from asexual that only requires one. For sexual reproduction, you have to have two parents. And the parents are going to transfer their DNA or their genetic information through their gametes, okay? Through the sperm and the egg. Each gamete contains half the amount of chromosomes. So in humans, that is 23. The gametes are then going to join together to form a zygote, which will have the full set of chromosomes. So in humans, that equals 46. Because there are two parents, offspring are going to be different from the parent organism because of something we're gonna learn about today called recombination or crossing over of chromosomes. Okay, and we'll learn about that in just a second, but it's going to lead to genetic diversity. Um, all right, now let's look at this diagram. So we've seen the letters N and two N before. And I'm gonna remind you that whenever you see just one N or N, we're gonna call that haploid. Now, hap kind of looks like the word half, um, and that's because haploid means that that cell contains half the total number of chromosomes. So sperm and egg are haploid, meaning in humans, they contain 23 chromosomes. They contain half of the total amount. Okay, but we call a zygote a diploid cell. And diploid means that they're going to have the full amount or the total number of chromosomes. So in humans, when the haploid sperm and haploid egg come together, they combine they form a diploid zygote that has a total 46 chromosomes. And then that zygote is going to develop normally into an organism. Now, I probably shouldn't have used 23 and 46 in this example because we see here that this organism is a dog, um, but <laughs> we're just gonna ignore that and carry on. All right, so what process allows for the creation of gametes? We need to know that that process is known as meiosis. So meiosis produces sex cells, gametes, sperm, egg. And it looks a little bit different between sperm and egg. And we'll learn about that at the end of today's lesson. But for, first we're going to read through this passage. I want you guys to annotate any important information because it will come in handy. All right, so meiosis is cell division of gametes and ultimate, ultimately results in four cells that are genetically unidentical to one another. When we see this word unidentical, we mean they are genetically unique. They're genetically different, okay? This is what leads to genetic diversity. Chromosomes that have come together, or chromosomes come together that contain the same genes from each parent. These are known as homologous chromosomes. They line up next to each other and they actually have the ability to switch genes from one another, from one chromosome to the next. This phenomenon is what's known as crossing over or recombination. And this is the reason why you might resemble your parents, but you're not exact copies or exact replicas of them. You are a little bit different. So meiosis is also responsible for creating genetic biodiversity and variation within species. So this is why we have genetic diversity across species, right? We all don't look alike. We all don't look identical to each other. And that's because of this process, okay? So what exactly is recombination? So I just told you that guys, that it's kind of like switching genes, but what does that actually look like? So what happens is two homologous chromosomes, which are chromosomes that are the same size, are going to line up next to each other. And it's kind of like an introduction. You can see here, they're kind of shaking hands. They're like, hey, you look like me, nice to meet you. 
Like I've heard so many good things, but then it gets kind of violent, okay? Because in the middle of that introduction, they're shaking hands. They just decide to rip each other's arms off, okay? But don't worry, that arm is going to a good home because that arm, they're actually gonna switch arms. So when we say they're switching genes, you can see here that they're actually switching arms of that chromosome and then reattaching that arm to each other. So this pink chromosome right here is actually giving up its arm to this yellow chromosome. And this yellow chromosome is giving up its arm to the pink chromosome, okay? And the reason they switch these genes or switch their arms is because this is what leads to genetic variation. Because later <laughs> in meiosis, when the chromosomes get split apart, there's genetic diversity. They now have different arms and different sets of genes that get passed on, okay? So I want you guys to write down the full definition of meiosis that I have here, okay? So meiosis is a type of cell division that produces four genetically unique or genetically diverse daughter cells with half the total number of chromosomes as the parent cell. So you can see here, this is what we're talking about with crossing over or recombination. Okay, because these chromosomes have different arms. They've already switched with each other, so they're a little bit different. And then as you can follow these chromosomes throughout the split, you see that at the very end, we're left with, oh no, go back. Four genetically unique chromosomes, or I'm sorry, four genetically unique cells all with different sets of genes because they have already switched arms, right? So when we split these four chromosomes in half, we're left with four genetically unique cells. They each have different sets of genes in them, right? And this is what leads to genetic diversity across species and across you. Now on this, oh no, I've got a random red line. Let's try, all right. On the next few slides, I've outlined the different steps of meiosis for you, but I don't actually want you guys to memorize these steps. All I want you to know is that in meiosis, the steps are almost identical to what we see in mitosis. We still have prophase, we still have metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis, but there are two differences we need to know, okay? We need to know that crossing over, that recombination or switching of arms that we just looked at occurs in prophase one of meiosis. And the reason we call it prophase one is because these four steps actually happen again. So we have my, we describe it as meiosis one and meiosis two. And the reason is because in meiosis one, we still only have two cells, but we know that with meiosis, we should theoretically end with four cells. So this exact step, this exact series of steps has to happen twice so that eventually we end with four genetically unique or different cells. Okay, but again, I don't want you guys to memorize these steps. The only thing I want you to know is that these steps are going to result in four genetically diverse cells or genetically different. Okay, so I just, again, I just want you to know meiosis produces four genetically unique cells with half the total number of chromosomes. If you know that, you're good. But now let's actually look at what's the difference between mitosis and meiosis? Because these words look pretty similar, but they mean very different things. So when we're talking about mitosis, we're talking about cell division of body cells. You might also see that called somatic cells. So mitosis happens in things like your skin cells and your um, muscle cells, right? So mitosis, we are producing two genetically identical cells. We start with one diploid cell. So in humans, remember diploid is gonna be the full amount of chromosomes. There are 46. But in mitosis, that one cell is going to split into two genetically identical cells. So because of that, these two cells are both diploid. There's still 46 chromosomes in each of them. They look the exact same um, as the parent cell. But meiosis is a little bit different. Meiosis happens in sex cells or gametes. So we start out the same. We still start out with one diploid cell with 46 chromosomes. But then remember there are two divisions, right? So this is representing meiosis one. And then finally, after meiosis two, we're left with four 
haploid, genetically diverse or different cells. And because they are haploid, they contain one half the total number of chromosomes, which in humans is going to be 23. Oh. All right, make sure you are comfortable with these differences between the two processes. This will come up again. So mitosis results in two genetically identical cells. Meiosis results in four genetically unique or different cells. Okay, now meiosis happens in both males and females. This is how we produce sperm and eggs, but those two processes are actually a little bit different. Okay, let's figure out what those differences are. So in males who produce sperm, this process of sperm meiosis is what we call spermatogenesis. So this suffix genesis means creation. So spermatogenesis is the creation of sperm. But what does that look like? Okay, so during meiosis of sperm cells, four viable sperm are produced. This word viable means usable. Okay, they are, they can be used. Assuming that everything goes correctly during meiosis, all four sperm cells will be equipped to combine with the egg of a female. As stated before, only half the number of chromosomes are present within each sperm cell, because when fertilization occurs, the sperm will release its DNA into the egg cell and combine to make the full human 46 chromosome set. So we need to know that with spermatogenesis, four sperm cells are produced that each contain half the total number of chromosomes. Right, so we start out with 46 in this diploid cell, but we end with four haploid cells that contain 23 chromosomes. But all four of these can be used. All four of them are viable. Okay, but in females, it's a little bit different. Okay, so in females who produce eggs, this process is known as oogenesis. So again, this word genesis means creation. And for whatever reason, the prefix OO is referring to eggs. So if you, it's kind of a tricky word to remember, but if you look at that word OO, the O's kind of look like little eggs. Okay, so whenever you see those two O's next to each other, think of eggs. So how is this different from spermatogenesis? Well, meiosis of egg cells is a little bit different. Assuming that everything goes correctly during meiosis, Four egg cells are created like sperm meiosis. However, only one of them will mature and be used for reproductive purposes. So only one of them is viable or useful. The other three eggs are called polar bodies and are usually disregarded or disintegrated by the body. Um, to be quite honest, they're kind of just thrown away. So the body will actually just reabsorb those cells and kind of recycle the materials to make something else. Um, so the human female mature egg cell contains only 23 chromosomes because when it is fertilized by the, egg, or by the sperm cell, the total number of chromosomes will be the full 46 required to make a full human being. So oogenesis is pretty different from, sper from spermatogenesis. We still have four cells being created, but only one of them can be used. Okay, so this one that I have put in a box right here is the only mature egg cell. And we call that mature egg cell an ovum. So it still has 23 chromosomes. It is still considered haploid, but the other three cells known as polar bodies are just thrown away. They're not used. They are not viable. Okay, and that is all I've got for you today. So use that information to complete the two questions on your exit ticket. Let me know what questions you have and have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys tomorrow.